Hi friends, this is KK. Welcome to IT Geeks. In this video series, uh, I'll demonstrate you on how to install all the following softwares. Uh, you know, actually I've spent a lot of time browsing websites on YouTube, couldn't get things at one place. Even if I get some, either they are hard to follow or it's not in detail. You know, things are not as difficult as what uh, you people imagine. It's pretty simple. Well, in this video series, I would definitely <clears throat> say that you'll save a lot of time. So you don't have to do any kind of thing again. All you have to do is just follow the simple steps and your server is up and running. So, and yeah, one more thing is I wanted to tell you this uh, all these topics couldn't be covered in one video, so I'm gonna make some four videos for covering all these topics. The first video I'll cover the first and second one VMware Workstation and the Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6.4. In the second video, I'll be covering Oracle Grid infrastructure. And in the third video, I'll be covering the Oracle database. And in the final one, the fourth video, I'll be covering the WebLogic server. Well, uh, you know, there are a lot of beginners uh, for whom it's very hard to get things done. But believe me, guys, it's not very difficult as you think. It's very easy. So, okay, uh, let's go ahead and start this. So first in this video, uh, I'll just uh, make sure that you can install this VMware Workstation and the Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Well, VMware is just a just a tool for me to demonstrate you the installation of Red Hat Linux. Actually, you can just follow the same steps even on your production server. The things are very same. So. The first thing what we need is the VMware Workstation software. So I have my VMware Workstation software already downloaded here. But in case if you guys are, uh, I mean, if you don't want to search and just go to directly this to this link, that's the VMware website, and uh, yeah, this is the link with which you'll get. Just click on download now and uh, that's it, you are good to go. I'll just continue with my downloaded version. So just click on next, accept the license. So here's the home screen which you get uh, the first time. Mm -hmm. I just close this. I'll go to file, click on uh, new virtual machine. So guys, I've uh, completed the VMware workstation installation part, and now we'll continue with the second one that is the Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6.4. So to do this, uh, you need to set up the, uh, I mean the physical hardware configuration. Uh, so we'll go with the typical one, and uh, the operating system we'll install later. We just need the hardware configuration. Just tell them what Linux you are going you are going to install. Red Hat Linux 6.4, and uh, give it some name. specific 
location you can just mention it next and uh, yeah here um, give the space that you want for your red hat I'd give it 100 and uh, this part uh, store as a single disk or a split disk uh, I don't think it really matters um, for small space if you're going for a huge amount of uh, let's say some 500 gigs or something then maybe you would really worry about it but it's you know it makes uh, you to I mean, transfer your files to your uh, external hard disk and move it somewhere if you are splitting into uh, let's say for each 20 GB there will be a split of uh, uh, there will be split in the file so right now I will go with the default one and yeah finish it okay so this is your uh, hardware configuration so go to edit virtual machine settings I will need a printer on card USB and yeah this is important the network adapter this is where your uh, VMware virtual machine Red Hat Linux can gets connected to your local so use this bridge connection and uh, the next you go to the CD DVD and here you specify the path of your Red Hat image so I have my image here if not far and this is the ISO file. Okay, so just click OK and the options part I'd uh, explain you later. In this we have the one important one is the share folder. I'll come to this later. So just click OK and uh, yeah, one more thing is I'd like to increase the RAM for this. say 3 GB 3 gigs of RAM okay. and okay so I'll power on this virtual machine it should show me the installation screen okay yeah and uh, take you to the next screen skip it Click on next, next, and next. You go with the first option basic storage devices. Uh, as of now, I don't have any data, so I'm going to discard it. This one is important. You have to specify your host name. I'd say. I'd uh, recommend you to configure your network at this place. It's up to you. You can also can configure it later. But you know, as soon as your uh, OS is up, you can get it connected from your local. That's what I want. I don't want to configure it later. So connect automatically, which is very important. Whenever you reboot your operating system. This is very important else uh, you have to do it manually the interface I have up and I have uh, down you know right interface configuration up so specify the <coughs> IP address go to manual I'd give it a
give you a root password root one two three in root one two three click on next it's a weak password it's okay use anyway and yeah select the second option and one more thing I wanted to remind you is uh, this option here review and modify the partition layout is an important one if you're looking for customized partitions I recommend you to just check this and uh, click on next if you don't click on that checkbox you will not get the screen so just go ahead and uh, configure your partition spaces Swap space is very important for your Oracle. Normally, I give around uh, 26 gigs of swap space, but it needs around 16 GB of uh, swap space. Okay, and uh, normally I in I install the software in a specific folder called software. if you want to go back you can go back but I'm gonna write changes to the disk so here just go with the default settings click next and yes one more important thing you see the customize now here very important one again so check this and click next you see the screen if you don't check that customize now button sorry the customize now checkbox you don't get to see the screen this is the screen where you can uh, specify the RPMs that you want to be installed for your oracle so I'd recommend you to go to this option and choose the libraries that you want in the base go through all the libraries and check the one which is you feel is essential for the oracle
see this compact lip very important okay. debugging tools nothing much legacy unit Guru servers, server platform, no packages here, web services, database, nothing, nothing here, desktops, yes, desktops important again, if you don't choose this, you don't get to see any UI user interface for your Linux system, all you have to do is just go to the command line and type everything imagine <laughs> so in the desktop uh, I'd like to install Tiger VNC yes here VNC is important when you are uh, uh, connecting it from your local desktop to the server important one but here right now we are doing in VMware so you have the connectivity already but normally in uh, most of the cases we connect the server through the VNC so I'd recommend you to install VNC and uh, desktop platform nothing much here yeah and this graphical administration tools application part we need internet browser yeah development important again additional developments in this you'll have uh, lib AIO yeah here button for Oracle libcap and Unix platform development nothing development tools yeah here you have compact GCC important again well uh, the professionals can say that they can install all these RPMs manually later <laughs> trust me guys uh, if one RPM needs another RPM a lot of dependencies and I'd rather prefer this way. Okay. Uh, everything looks well and good. Nothing here. And the languages, I'll go with the default. Click on next. So it will check for all the dependencies and based on your system configuration uh, the times may vary around 3, 4, 5 minutes. Let's see how many packages it's got. Should be more than 1000. Yeah, 1159. So the guys who are uh, Experts can skip this part, forward the video and go to the next part and uh, for the guys who want to see this can just continue.
Okay, almost done. I can have a bootloader. Okay, so go ahead and reboot it. It'll ask you for a few more configurations, and that's it. You're Click on forward, agree forward. Now I prefer to register later. Forward and forward again. I don't want to create any users. Forward again. Forward. I don't want any KDM to be enabled. And finish. So you have to reboot again to get this. Okay, so log in with your root user. installed so the first step after you uh, complete the installation of your Red Hat you go to VM and install your VM tools VM tools uh, are kind of important because it makes it the navigation you the mouse navigation a bit better and uh, main thing I liked about this is the share folder. Remember I showed you the options here in the VM settings. Settings and the share folder. This one. You see, to modify the share folder, I mean, if you want to enable the share folder, you have to definitely install this VMware tools. Or else, if you want to transfer any files from your local desktop to your uh, VMware server then you have to use either some of the core I mean the FTP tools or some other way but this way it's I mean it's faster guys so I'm gonna copy it to some folder in my Linux alright okay Open the terminal. Go to the folder R data and you'll see this file. Okay, so use the command tar minus a hyphen xvf. This 
can unzip your uh, uh, .zz extension. Let's see one more folder now. Yeah. Go to that folder. And now run the .pl file. Okay. It'll ask you for some uh, Permissions just press enter, 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 and enter. That's all. Let everything be default. I don't want to customize anything. Okay, so uh, the VMware tools are installed. After this, configure your share folder. Let me show you. Normally, the share folders are uh, mounted on this path. See, right now you don't have anything here. So, let me go to this VM settings and uh, go to options. Share folders. Yeah, you see, before this was disabled, I couldn't select the option. Now, click on always enabled and add the path that you want to be shared to your host. I have my software all in one place, so I'd like to share this folder next and finish. Okay, so let's check here. Give it a moment. Yeah, got it. Now you can see the folder here. And you see all my software contents here. So that's it how uh, you share your folder local folded to the VMware Red Hat. So that's it guys, that's it for this video. And uh, we'll uh, okay, and do a proper shutdown. So thanks, thanks for watching this video. And do let me know if you have any doubts.